I'm chilling at home and I'm like with my favorite t-shirt, obviously. And you were saying Angular, so I'm like, it doesn't matter how late it is. Angular, I always have time for Angular. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Sure, that's pretty cool. My friend who hooked me up with the interview uh, told his yeah. boss that I'm already good with Angular. <laughs> You are you are good with Angular. You just have to discover it. I mean, if you're good with uh, Svelte and, and you're pretty good with other like modern stuff that I haven't even tried yet, so you're good with Angular. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Good to hear. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm ASD and the video that you're about to see is from April 2023. That is a whole nine months ago, but I just didn't have the chance to post process it earlier. In this video, I'm talking with Dylan, who is a web developer with extended experience in Svelte. He also has some experience with React, but at the time of the recording, again, nine months ago, he had no experience with Angular. And as someone who is very passionate about Angular, I was very happy to help him get ready for a job interview. Very important to note that we were using Angular version 15, and Angular version 16 was just about to be released the following month. Also, it was pretty late in the evening for me. It was after 10 p.m., which did affect my concentration a bit. To get Dylan as prepared as possible, we started with hands-on coding and intro to some of the main concepts in Angular. So if you're interested in this topic, keep on watching. So how much do you know about Angular? Have you started building an app or something like that? I know nothing. I have not even spun up an app yet. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I only just found a tutorial after digging. I don't know why, but I had to dig for an Angular tutorial that wasn't five years old. Uh, yes, uh, that that is a common thing. You will you will find a lot of that going on. Okay, so um, why would you prefer if you share the screen and you d do some coding and I just kind of try and help you and guide you, or if I do it? I think it might be more practical for you if you do it. I mean, you will yeah, remember yeah. it better. That's that's where I that's where I learn best is if I'm just yeah. doing it and then you can just like tell me like okay so implement this and then like I'll try to implement it and then you go oh no that's stupid uh, <laughs> no I, I probably <laughs> wouldn't do that I probably like my my workflow is like I build it and then after this I realize oh this might have been stupid it's like let's try something else but the basic stuff I was about to say because like for me when I look at someone sharing their screen there's just always this bit of disconnect like I get only like 60% of what's going on and then if I have to repeat it myself it's just a little bit more difficult I'd rather just do it oh, myself wow. yeah <laughs> and yeah even even sometimes like someone is loading their screen and it looks like you know gibberish and then I open it up and I'm like oh that was so simple <laughs> I could do it, you could have done it. <laughs> yeah I, I get that a lot too it's so weird people are trying to show me a thing I'm like that's not that's, that's not even JavaScript <laughs> yeah yeah we went through a lot of topics and hands-on practice in creating an angular app adding angular material generating components services interfaces using the angular CLI using the HTTP clients, making API calls, routing in Angular, and uh, I just briefly mentioned RxJS, and even a few more topics. But in order to maintain a concise video length, I decided to keep only the part about using the HTTP client in Angular. You can do a lot of things. You can do buttons and whatever. You know all about the UI uh, things. But I think one of the most important things probably about Angular would be the... Um, HTTP client, which oh, is the HTTP client. So Angular has its own HTTP client um, as a built-in feature. That is the way that you do your, um, you know, API calls and fetching the information and things like that. So I think that's probably one of the most important things about Angular. I don't think that other frameworks do that. I think, yeah, each one, but Angular does handle that. So, for example, uh, what I was doing is like, let's say, uh, let's do another component. I'll, I'll do one of my standard things that I always do in, in pretty much all the apps that I do. Um, but let's uh, go into app again and components or whatever. You just, you just need to make sure that you're generating this component in the components. And then into components. And then ng, NG uh, yeah, generate component or just GC. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, 
uh, generate component and we're gonna call this one okay essentially in this component we're gonna load some data so let's just call it people we're gonna load some people there and is that it yeah I, I think this is pretty standard thing. I, I might be brainwashed from doing this too many times, but like, yeah, it's always like something that loads there in the main component. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do now is something really cool. So the interfaces, but now for that, we're gonna generate interface again with the CLI. But now this one is gonna be in app and it's gonna be its own folder, which is called models. So now you need to ng uh, generate interface. So this is ng g uh, i. I. And uh, then space, and you're gonna make a folder called models space, and then let's call this one person because it's gonna be one person. Yeah, I think that's the way it should be. Okay. And then what does the i stand for? Interface. Generate Inter interface. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if you go into models, person, so we're gonna put in stuff for this person. It's gonna have like standard things, name, which is gonna be a string, age, which is, you know, <laughs> you know, those super standard stuff. Um, yeah, whatever whatever uh, GitHub Copilot tells me that a person is, uh, yeah. <laughs> which it seems to think that a person is only comprised of an ID, a name, and an age. Like yeah, but essentially yeah. we need to add in the HTTP client. Oh no, we need a JSON file. We're just going to put in a JSON file with a bunch of people. Uh, this can go in your assets and it can be just like app.json or something like API.json. I don't know. People.json. <laughs> API.json. Because yeah, because we're pretty much simulating like an API. Like if you would get them from an API. And then you make, um, you just make a. Um, Objects array with just the, some people. Uh, I think it doesn't need to have. No, it doesn't need to have people. You don't. You don't uh, say people. You just open it up. Um, yeah. Oh, just open yeah, up an array. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's JSON. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, yeah. And then. Uh, uh, what did we have? ID, ID, uh, name, age, yeah. uh, string, ID, ah, cool, that's nice, yeah, so make like three of oh. them or something like that, so we have like a few. Trailing commas in JSON, save. Sorry, I'm creating some fun characters. <laughs> I there do that go. too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, next step. So now uh, import for the HTTP client. Uh, pretty much all the imports are just the same that you did with the Angular material things. But here we can try instead of like importing the whole thing, go into the app mode. Yeah, so here, but in the imports, um, just type it in the imports and you should, uh, no, below in, in the imports array. In the imports array. Yeah. Gotcha. Just type um, HTTP. Um, it's camel case. HTTP client module. Maybe you should show it up. Yeah, HTTP client module. That's the one. And now we should put in the import for you. Do you see above? It just put the import for you, but it put it with the. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can you can rearrange it. Like yeah, I usually rearrange them. In the people component now there is a spec ts file that always gets generated but that's for testing so you don't need to do anything with it yet i mean you can see it just basically when you run tests later on it's actually pretty handy gotcha. but yeah in this one we're gonna um simulate an api call so pretty much when you do an api call okay so um i just gotta go over the lifecycle hook so uh, there is a ng on init lifecycle hook so that's like the first thing that happens when it loads we need to implement it in this one so do you see how it has component mm, at the top it has import component from mm -hmm. angular core uh, you just need to put a comma there and 
put in on init yeah there we go and then on export class people components you need to uh, go into the line where it starts uh, export class components yeah just right after and then space and you gotta put in implements on init Oh, there we go. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> that, that was pretty cool. So in the constructor, you're going to inject the um, HTTP client, which is private. Uh, you type in private. Um, no, not there. Not there. In the in the um, in the space HTTP colon and then you put in HTTP. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, now it hasn't imported. So if you hover over, it should give you a quick fix. Let's see add import there we go so over here uh, it is pretty much telling you that is uh very similar to what we need to do this http get and then um so um, the suggestion is correct until this http dot get but then you need to change it a little bit see already it's telling you over here what it's suggesting is like if you were using it with an actual api address which is not the json yeah. file so it's pretty much the same but stop it at get so your interface you basically you're putting your interface which was a uh, person person yeah okay oh, oh so this is where we're doing person our... array you gotta be an array so yeah okay now you need to import person but with a quick fix it should work okay now instead of this uh https uh, swappy dev or something uh, what you need is you need to go to your JSON file. The path to it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you subscribe to it. That's pretty much like, so with the HTTP client and with RxJS, um, you need to subscribe to something because otherwise it's like with the subscribe, you're basically saying that you want to receive that data. You're interested in this data. If you don't put in dot subscribe, it's not going to be like... Uh, nothing is going to happen pretty much so you subscribe okay. to it and then you just need um data instead of response any you just need data over there uh no sorry all of that is not supposed to be in the constructor <laughs> uh so do i need to remove private and everything else no then? this one this one is in there but um everything that is yeah here this one should be in the own in it sorry i didn't see that but yeah the suggestion was right it was just like the placement okay so this one is okay but now when you go just below export class people component okay here you define property so we need to have a property which is going to be person um small small letters all together and yeah this one is going to actually equal um person array uh, all together and then equal just array yep uh, no just, not, just array. yeah yeah you remove the console log and you're going to put in um this dot person equals data okay so it should be people instead of person i'm sorry um the property should be people instead of person <laughs> Yeah, my, my mistake. People, and then below it needs to be people also. Shouldn't, are, aren't we going to need some kind of reference to people here? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, but I was wondering why they are not in the console. Log. But here you're correct, because here we need to import the actual component. And that's why um, it's not visualized there. But yes, just the same way that you did app header. You can, you can actually remove a router outlet because we're not, uh, we're, we're not setting up routing right now. Um, so instead of, up, can you put an app header in one line, the closing and the, yeah, sorry. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but it's just like, for me, it's a little bit easier too. So uh, yeah, over here, just the same way that you did app header, you just do app uh, people. If you want to, yeah, show it up. We haven't done the HTML for people. Yeah, my bad, sorry. Uh, now for people, we need to do in, um, uh, directive, which is pretty nice. And so the way that you load people over here, you're going to have um, 
usually matte card but we can skip it we don't need to do a matte card and we're going to use the ng4 which is a nice directive and it's pretty much going to do the loop for you i love those um so what you're gonna do is um let's just start like a just a regular div i suppose you don't you don't need a class for now you can do it later on but um what i meant with matte card is a material component card um, but you, you can import that if you, if you really want to. So uh, where the class is, remove the class for the moment and instead of the class, uh, put in um, asterisk and ng for... Uh, camel case? Yeah, it's like a for loop. Oh. Yes, yes. That equals, um, and it's going to be a person of people. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, maybe I should have come up with something else because person and people is a little bit confusing. People. Uh, they should find... Oh, sorry. Let person of people. Because <laughs> you're doing a... Yeah. Let person of people. Okay, now this should be looping through them. So... No, you don't need to put in app person, then you can put in another, you can do a P, P tag, like just something. Uh, and this one is going to be, yeah, there we go. This, this one shows you basically, that's how you just load them. And you can, you can accept this one, yeah. Okay. And you just go into each property, you could do name, age, and whatever. Uh, you kind of do the same thing with images and whatever, but it's, it's. It's a pretty handy um, for loop over there. <laughs> Done. Um, so there are a few directives like that. There is um, ng4, uh, and then it's the ng if, which is also pretty convenient. Like you can do based on a condition. So for example, if you have something that in your TS file it turns out to be true or false, you can do. Um, you can't do them on the same one though that is the only bad thing you can't do them on the same element so it will have to be oh. ng if with the asterisk also but it has to be on a different element that is yeah i, I wish yeah <laughs> ng if uh. and you can do um person and put in like some property that the person doesn't have um ngh it should load because it's true put in um like i don't know cash <laughs> i don't know something that it's not a property <laughs> okay but this, since this is not a property of person uh it's not gonna uh, yeah yeah you still need to yeah okay because because we didn't list it as a property so it's not gonna but let's oh, say if you, yeah, you can you can go into the interface and let's put in poop, <laughs> uh, the interface and in the, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be boolean, yeah, and uh, I think possibly in the JSON, if you, oh uh, yeah, no, this works as well, it shouldn't yeah, show you anyone. In the JSON we add, uh, just on some random, yeah, not all of them, but like on some of them. Uh, yeah, I need to should hit Napoleon Dynamite, right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's got the poop. <laughs> cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Napoleon Dynamite does poop, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is all for this video, but I might upload another video where we did an interview prep, which is more about theory and we went over common questions that might be asked during an interview for an Angular-focused role. So come back and check my channel for new uploads. Thank you for watching.